Specialist with Oklahoma Cooperative Extension. I'm talking with Dan Pote of uh, USDA ARS in Boonville, Arkansas with a subsurfer, a uh, subsurface poultry litter applicator. What got you started, the idea of subsurface application of poultry litter? Well, for a long time we've known that uh, poultry litter is a valuable resource, but we also know that uh, the only way to put it on the land has been to spread it on the soil surface uh, simply because it's a bulky, dry material. And uh, the only people that have been able to cover that up have been people that had tilled systems. Most uh, litter is being spread in no-till situations, especially in uh, perennial pastures. And uh, the problem with doing that is it, it leaves it very vulnerable to nutrient losses. If you uh, leave it on the surface, uh, a lot of it never comes in contact with the soil very well. Uh, it's exposed to the atmosphere. You will get a lot of nitrogen losses. Up to 50% of the nitrogen may actually just vaporize as ammonia. Particularly on a hot day like today. Uh, well, a hot day or if the litter gets damp and, and the microbes get active, then they will kick out a lot of ammonia. So uh, we were wanting to uh, prevent a lot of these problems. Now, of course, when a farmer puts it on the field, often it's the neighbors that complain yes. the most yes. about the smells. We would like to control the odor problems but we want to keep that ammonia from escaping. And another big problem is if it's lying in on the surface, that's in the runoff zone. So if there's a big storm event, that storm runoff will take a lot of those nutrients right off the field, down into the nearest uh, streams and lakes. And nutrients being what they are, they're going to fertilize plants wherever they go. If they wind up in a lake, they'll fertilize the algae in the lake. And that can create some real water quality problems. Get some DO loss. And it goes down from there. Right, when, so we felt like, uh, judging by what we've seen from uh, liquid manures, if we could find a way to put it under the surface, we could prevent almost all those problems. When we uh, talk to poultry producers about surface application, generally we give them a rate of two tons per acre. What kind of application rates are you gonna do with the subsurface? Most of the time we have put on about uh, two to three tons per acre, but uh, if a person wanted a heavier application, we can go above that. We've gone over four tons per acre in some cases. Uh, the nice thing about this is because you're retaining nitrogen in the soil, you normally don't need to put on a very heavy application. In fact, you can go lighter than you would normally go with a surface application and still get the same production from your grasses You'll, because you're retaining that nitrogen instead of having it uh, volatilized. And this has a real precise application too. You, you can set it fairly close. Right. If you've seen a, a surface spreader in action, you know that the uh, uniformity is, is fairly poor in some cases, especially if there's a lot of cake involved, big chunks of cake will fly all over the place. You may have twice as much manure here as you do over there. Uh, this will give you a very uniform application and we can make it very precise. We can set the rate we want and we can take it down to very low rates that are not even possible with uh, right. surface spreaders. So basically what this does is opens up the soil and, and drops the litter into the soil just like a planter would or a, a grain drill. Exactly. In fact, I tell people don't even think of this as spreading litter. It's not a spreader. Uh, what we're really doing is no-till planting litter. Uh, in fact, the parts you see down here on this old prototype are, are mostly off an old white planter, a corn planter. It's got the leading uh, coulter to slice the soil, set the, set the spot for the trench. Then we have double disc openers that follow that and, and open up a trench that's about three inches deep and about two inches wide. And the litter drops down the chute between those double discs and into the trench. And then a closing mechanism comes along behind either a closing wheel or a, or a tire and will close the soil back over that litter and, and completely isolate it from the atmosphere. Litter's a pretty, uh, how shall we say, notoriously unhomogeneous material. How do you get big chunks of litter down through this little slot? Uh, that's one advantage of this machine and it makes it a lot different than a than say a corn planter is we have a mechanism inside here. It's, it's fundamentally a system of parallel augers that take the manure from the very back of the stack, pull it underneath the stack all the way to the front here. They pull it through a metal plate up here and into an open compartment right above these chutes so that uh, any large size particles are not going to make it into this front area where the chute's located. And they get crushed along the way by the augers or mm -hmm. they get smashed against that front plate and reduced to a small particle size. So it's pretty much pulverized by the time it, it gets to the It the is drop. pulverized and, and drops in there very cleanly. The, the one uh, drawback would be is if you tried to put wet litter in here. This is a gravity fed machine so mm -hmm. just like any no-till planter you wouldn't put wet seeds in it because the right. seeds would stick and you'd have problems. Well if you put damp litter in here you'll see a similar problem. About uh, what moisture content do you start to see the problems? Uh, 
Well, for, for litter, we, we recommend certainly no more than 25% moisture, and we, really we think it works the best if you have 20% or less. So when you see that type of litter, it's going to look dusty dry to mm -hmm. you. It can have big chunks. It could even have dead birds, but they need to be dry right. chunks. Of so it's basically your, your typical broiler house, but not the breeders and not the, uh, the hens, really. Well, the, the breeders and the hens could use it, but they would need to have the manure moved to a stacking shed where it could dry out dry for out a few first. weeks. In fact, one of the inventors of this machine uh, has a breeder house, and he, and he helped uh, design this, and he said he has hen litter that he stacked for several weeks that could easily run through yeah. this, but when it comes out of the house, it is too damp. You said this is an old prototype. You've got a newer model, and uh, are we gonna see this commercialized anytime soon? Uh, we do have a newer model. Uh, the Barron and Brothers International Company um, out of Cornelia, Georgia is uh, building new prototypes. They've gotten a license to manufacture this. Uh, we realize this technology probably won't be for everybody. It, it, it's a little slower spreading than the, or slower putting the litter out than what you have with a spreader, but it has some very big advantages and we feel like uh, we at least want to provide an option for those uh, farmers that want to use their nutrients more efficiently, get a lot more production out of their nutrients and at the same time, uh, help protect the quality of their air and their water and uh, prevent the odor problems that can go with uh, litter applications. Well, I know in eastern Oklahoma, we have a lot of poultry producers that are looking forward to seeing this, and I'm, thanks for showing it to us. Oh, you're certainly welcome, and we, we hope to see more of them in the field soon. <laughs>